In a previous video, I was showing you this chainsaw. I bought this at Home Depot or Lowe's. It's a Ryobi chainsaw. I bought it for like 130 bucks, and I, I really thought it's just going to be a throwaway chainsaw. I wanted something small. I have a larger one that I rarely ever use, and it's ancient. So I wanted something small. That way, when you're cutting fire you know, firewood, you don't want your blade to go out past the log very far. And the reason is, is if you're cutting and you hit a, I don't know if you can see that in the video, a rock, the chainsaw can kick back up on you. If you hit a rock with the tip or on the top or even on the bottom, it can kick back on you. So I try to use a small blade, small as possible. And then for larger items, I go ahead and get that big chainsaw. This thing has been a fantastic chainsaw for as cheap as it was. You know, everybody tells you you got to have a still chainsaw. I will admit it, it feels a little underpowered sometimes, but it may be that it was just getting older. Uh, I don't remember it feeling underpowered when I first got it. Well, this last fall, it was running fine. There was nothing wrong with it. I was going to cut a tree down over here. I changed my mind, but it was up and running and I, there was fencing over there and I just really didn't want to get into that fencing so I just left it alone. Later in the winter time Carolyn asked me to cut up a, an old woody knotty piece of wood I should say and so I started this thing up and it, it just wouldn't stay running. So I was pretty confident the carburetor was dirty so I thought well I'll work on it in the springtime. Let the knotty piece of wood go and she's actually made something else out of it so uh, good thing I didn't cut it up. Well, when I broke into it, I realized that one of the hoses here had disconnected off the priming bulb. So this hose right here had disconnected off the priming bulb. And I showed you that in the video, and I'll put an up next box at the end of this video to that video so you can watch it. So that priming bulb, when I was pressing on it, was shooting gas, but it wasn't going into the carburetor because this hose here feeds into the carburetor here's the carburetor here so it would have went into this right here so I reconnected the hose and I tried to start it up and it started for a second and then died and I couldn't get it to go again so I took it back apart and what had happened I had to trim the hose because this had kind of tapered out that's probably why it slipped off so I cut the hose, well then it was too short and it just, it just wasn't hanging onto the carburetor. So I decided to go ahead and replace the hose. Well, I have a whole bag of hoses that I bought a few years ago when I was repairing that old chainsaw. All the hoses in it got real brittle and were breaking off. I mean, you could just barely pull it and it would break. So I, I, I replaced this hose, hooked it all back together, and it started and it stayed running as long as I had the choke out. So the choke is this right here. You pull it out. Well, oh, there we go. So that's the choke. And then you hit the accelerator, it pops back in. So the way the choke works, so you can see it, is it pulls out and locks in place. And when you hit the throttle, this is the throttle. When you hit the throttle, the choke pops back into place, you know, where it's not choked. So it was running fine, but every time it would hit the throttle, it would die. So I knew the carburetor was dirty. I was certain that's what it was. So I decided, let's just go ahead and do some maintenance, you know, just regular preventive maintenance, cleaning, that kind of stuff. So I took the spark plug wire off the spark plug and it fell apart in my hand. I've tried to reassemble it a little bit, but there is this metal coil spring type thing that actually clamps onto the spark plug here. So when I pulled it off, it set the, the ring separated from that, the metal piece. And you might be able to see, I doubt it, there's a little hole in there. That's where the wire went through the insulation into the, that's how it was supposed to be, but it, it came off. So I took a pair of pliers and I took that spring off and boy, it just shot across the yard. So I have to order another one of these, or I did order another one of these. And this is called a stator. And what this does is it runs up against the 
flywheel and creates an electric spark. Every time that flywheel has a magnet and it, it comes across this, it sparks. Well, I guess this and this, I'm not really sure. It must be this, I guess. And it sparks and sends the spark to, well, I guess it creates electrical current and sends the spark to, or electrical current to the spark plug, which creates a spark. I have to order one of these. Well, that was $35 for the OEM part. So I got a Chinese aftermarket part that is in China and it's not going to be here until the 23rd of May through June 6th. So sometime in that time frame, it's already shipped. It shipped the next day. They did a really good job getting it out. So I'm waiting on this. Now, if I don't get that, because I don't have a lot of faith, I will. I'll go ahead and trim off the insulation on this and just kind of wrap it around the spark plug until I can find something else to, to replace it with. And then I'll put the cap back on it and it'll hold it won't be perfect but it'll be better than nothing while i was in there <laughs> they had this advertisement well not advertisement you're in amazon you know they got the whole list of things and the down there at the bottom it says other components you might need or whatever it says and it said carburetor and it was 14 dollars. so i bought the stator the oem was 35 dollars. the stator the chinese stator was 14 dollars. And so it said a carburetor, $14. And I thought, well, hey, instead of tearing this apart, which is kind of complicated when you get a carburetor this small. I mean, I've done them before. The weed eater one I've done before. You get them this small, there's, a, there's parts in there that just flings out everywhere. And you watch YouTube videos and they'll say, watch out for this spring and that spring. And sure enough, you'll forget about the spring and it pops loose. I thought for 14 bucks, I wouldn't have to mess with this. I already had this off and I was soaking in gasoline, so it's all cleaned up. I opened it up to see what it was and it had everything it had hoses and filters and spark plugs and a screwdriver and I thought okay 14 bucks if it even has half of this stuff I'll use it and the reviews were pretty good so I went and bought it well it came in yesterday it even showed the box in the picture I've never seen that on Amazon where they showed the box so I wanted to show you this is probably the, the only thing I've ever bought in my life where everything that, was advertised was in it as expected and i think what's amazing is i needed a carburetor well i didn't really need one but if i wasn't wanting to get one that's what i was going to get i just carburetor but this comes with everything all the maintenance items for 14 dollars 15 dollars and a screwdriver to disassemble and assemble your chainsaw now i already have one but hey i mean this is a little torque screwdriver this is fantastic well Although, now I'm looking at it, I didn't open it up before. Oh, no, I, I wonder if there's a Torx bit in there somewhere. I'm not sure. Maybe there's a Torx bit that I've already, well, I thought that was a screwdriver, but it's not, it's more of a, like a socket. Let me put my glasses on. Oh, I bet I, I get it. The Torx is inside. So you slide that torque screw inside this, this chamber and then the torque, that way it holds on there. That's, that's kind of neat. That's, that's kind of fancy. Okay. So first thing is, is we got the, the carburetor. So I would like to make sure that everything is similar. The first thing I notice is it doesn't come with the choke stem. This right here, but it's really no big deal because the only thing that's holding it in together holding it together is a let's see if i can get this in the camera there's a little cotter pin right there you can take that cotter pin out now of course i want to be careful that it didn't fly across the yard and then there's a little washer behind the cotter pin and then all i got to do is put it back on get it in the right direction right here so that is absolutely identical kind of looking at it Okay, got them all in the same positionings now. So yeah, that's absolutely identical. Everything is identical on it. And so I played with the choke. I wanted to make sure the choke worked the same because I remember I showed you it locks into place. So that locks into place and then you hit the throttle and it comes right back. My thumb was in the way. Pops right back. So that works. And it appears to be adjusted okay. There's an adjustment screw. Yeah, the adjustment is about, about right. This is a little better. The newer one's a little better because it's got a little spring in there. Those springs keep that screw from backing out or on its own. The original didn't have a screw. 
that's fantastic so the fuel intake another fuel intake around I'm not sure what the two hoses are for but oh so the fuel can cycle through the because that hooks up to the both of them hook up to the priming ball so it appears that the carburetor is identical now imagine buying a rebuild kit of a carburetor it would probably run you about 15 bucks and here we are with a carburetor with 15 bucks but it doesn't end there that's what's so amazing is there's much more there's this whole other bag which was advertised I can get it open now remember I told you I had to replace some hoses there's one hose and two so I can hold on to that. I'm not going to replace all this stuff. I'll replace it when needed so I can hang on to it. So that's fantastic. It has a new priming bulb. So the chainsaw has a priming bulb. Again, I'm not going to replace it until it needs it. If this breaks, then I'll replace it. But it has the little clips. I wasn't really sure how to get it out of there. I thought it might have screwed, you know, unscrewed out of there. But now that I have this, I can see it just has some retaining clips on it take a pair of new needle nose or a pair of pliers and squeeze that and you pull that one right out it comes with two gaskets the original carburetor has no gaskets on it so I'm not even sure if I'm going to use them but it has them if I want them you know I might use them on the front end and I'll explain why right now before I go any further what I notice somebody asked me do I use stabilizer in the gasoline? Well, first of all, I don't leave gasoline in the, in the chainsaw. I empty it out every time after I use it, and then I run it. You know, I try to start it back up and let it run until it runs out of gas. And I do that several times until it just doesn't start. I do that with my generators, too. That way, I know that nothing can clog up the carburetor. But the gasoline, you have to put the two-cycle oil in it, it's a uh, what uh, something uh, five fifty to one ratio. Well, right here, mine comes with fuel stabilizer, so um, it has stabilizer in it. That way, if there's any gas in it, it's going to make sure that it doesn't cl clog up the carburetor with that nasty gas. But the, the the thing I noticed when I took it all apart, this is the air filter shroud. This is what holds the air filter in place. Here's the air filter, so it goes right here. This is the junkiest air filter I think I've ever seen. It's terrible. It, it doesn't want to seal. It, it's, it, it's small. All kinds of junk had gotten past it. It was dirty. So that's what probably clogged up the carburetor right there. So I am going to put this in the gas that I put the carburetor in, the original carburetor, to, to clean it. To let that kind of clean up a little bit. Okay, and so then we continue on. Every chainsaw should have a like a, a fish tank bubbler type of filter in the gas tank so it comes with a new one I can replace it but ta-da comes with two that's incredible I might actually replace that just to to be replacing it if I can get it out without breaking everything breaking the hoses I might just go ahead and replace that and then it comes with a new spark plug and I will replace that too I always save maintenance items like that like spark plug and a filter that way if something happens and I don't have a spare I know the old one still worked it would just need I should replace it so I always hold on to those indefinitely actually uh, and that way if this one breaks for some reason I got a number one I've, so this is the the best package of stuff that I've ever received I think I, I don't think it, in my entire life I ever received such a good deal on a purchase inexpensive purchase and you get all these extra items even the box is advertised and I wanted to make sure that I called this company out I don't usually do this I'm not a sponsor of this product but it's called parts Zen so if you see their parts definitely look into it I'm not telling you to buy it look into it because it's probably got a fantastic deal based on this one example that I have parts Zen says parts maintenance kit so all I'm doing now is waiting for the stator 
and then I'll put all this together. I considered doing it today, and I thought if I can't get the spark plug wire to work, you know, cutting the, the insulation off and wrapping it around there, then it'll be another project because the other day I tried to do this and it, it just didn't work. So we had a video that didn't really show you anything. If you'll click the up next box, it'll take you to video where I was showing you the disassemble. Well, kind of. I, I'm showing you I got it to run. So if I can inspire you to find bargains when you're living your dreams. Thanks for watching.